All right, everybody, welcome to King Class number 37. It's going to be a great class. Go ahead and check in if you could. We'd like to get everybody checked in. If you don't mind also, hit the like and share. We do like uh, for people to share. We had just testimony, a lot of testimonies actually. Uh, people coming up to me saying they watch, and I had no idea uh, they even existed. Amen. Didn't even know them. Didn't know their name, but they come up. One was in uh, Las Vegas a couple of weeks ago, and then one was in Alabama last week. And what a blessing to be able to sow the word. And when you.
to King Class number 37. It's going to be a great class. Go ahead and check in if you could. We'd like to get everybody checked in. If you would don't mind also, hit the like and share. We do like uh, for people to share. We had just a testimony, a lot of testimonies actually. Uh, people coming up to me saying they watch, and I had no idea uh, they even existed. Amen. Didn't even know them. Didn't know their name, but they come up. One was in uh, Las Vegas a couple of weeks ago, and then one was in Alabama last week. And what a blessing to be able to sow the word. And when you share it, it's just multiplying the seed sown. That would be a, a, an awesome blessing, and we appreciate it if you could do that. be really, really, really cool. King Class 37, we are going to begin. Uh, please comment below. All the comments are much appreciated. We are uh, looking forward to getting this class uh, to you. Have been for a couple of weeks because we've missed a couple of weeks of class. And from being on the road, sometimes that happens. But we got faithful people that come in here and uh, attend all over the place. So King Class 37, kingdom first, kingdom first. Bible instructs us as seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of these things shall be added unto you. If you study that out, look at it above in Matthew 6 there and go up above 12, 15 scriptures, you'll see that he's talking about things. Things when you seek the kingdom, kingdom, king's dominion, when you seek the king's dominion or the kingdom of God, all the things pertaining to the kingdom. Kingdom of God is first. If kingdom of God is second, things don't get added to you. If it's third, things don't get added to you. Kingdom of God must be first place, first place. And when kingdom of God is first place, everything just follows you. If kingdom of God is not first place, you have to chase things down. You have to go and make things happen. Open your own doors. You put kingdom first, and God begins to open up doors for you. Praise the Lord. That's good news. Because there's nothing better than light and easy. Light and easy. Light and easy is a promise Jesus said. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Come and learn of me. Learn of me. Everywhere Jesus went, we know he he preached and he taught the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. And we now, we now, if we put the kingdom first, we have a promise that all of these things, and again, back into that scripture, up above there, it is talking about and referring to literal things. He said, what shall we eat? What shall we wear? What shall we drink? What, what, what shall we put on? Uh, he said, the pagans chase after these things, but your father knows that you have need of these things. Seek ye first the kingdom. Go after the kingdom. Kingdom of God. Kingdom of God being priority. And looking at priorities, we should uh, be able to tell, be able to look at our life, be able to uh, gauge in our life what is first, what is second, what do I have that is first place? Do I have something above the kingdom? We all know that. We know what priorities are in our life. But what also, tonight, what I'd love to give you the opportunity to do. We just got back from Orlando, Florida, Kissimmee, Winter Springs to be specific, and saw an awesome harvest for the kingdom come in, advance the kingdom there. 200 salvation, over 200 salvation. And great opportunity, amazing things taking place. And the reason tonight I want to give you the opportunity. Last night in our Wednesday night live stream we had here, we had to do live stream because we had a lot of weather in the area and things like that. So we live streamed. Lord gave me the message last night about rewards, crowns, and treasures. We're storing up in this very small period of time that we get. We get, the Bible says our life is like a vapor. And that vapor depends, everything we do in that vapor of time, which is a short period of time, affects our eternal rewards. Eternal rewards. The Bible says that uh, we have a life that now is and a life that is to come. NLT says 
that we, if we do things that are of value, of value, kingdom value, then there will, we will by no means lose our reward. So kingdom of God, you should be able to gauge and examine and inspect your life and see, am I advancing kingdom or am I advancing myself, my pleasures, my job, my business. I mean, your business could turn into a kingdom business. Your influence, everywhere that you go, you're a kingdom person. Kingdom first. I'm kingdom. Amen. Kingdom of God is who I am. It is not something I do. I am kingdom. I am a king with dominion. Now, if I will seek ye first king's dominion and exercise my authority, exercise my dominion, then it says things will just be added to me, almost like attracted to me coming to me. Deuteronomy 28.2, which is what I put on every Christmas card and I put on every uh, birthday card, every uh, happy birthday, Deuteronomy 28.2. And I hope people go look it up because it says that if you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you, overtake you. Unexpected blessing, unexpected radical things taking place. Looking up and saying, how did that happen? It had to be God because I know it wasn't me. You were getting busy with kingdom business and he was getting busy with your business. When you get busy with kingdom, God gets busy with you. When you put him first, he will put you first. When you seek him, all of a sudden, things you weren't even seeking after follow you, find you. It's like a magnet of favor. Favor surrounds you like a shield everywhere that you go. You are surrounded. Come out with your hands up. Praise the Lord. The message I preached a couple of weeks ago in Alabama, you're surrounded by what? Favor surrounds me. Goodwill surrounds me. Mercy surrounds me. I am surrounded. So I got to come out with my hands up. I need to go ahead and praise God, rejoice, believe that every promise is yes. Every promise is amen. It belongs to me. Glory to God. I have it now. I'm not going to get it, but I already got it. Amen. I am kingdom, kingdom. And in the kingdom, we have a book. We have a book that explains to us everything that we're supposed to be prioritized. If you do your life according to the word of God, everything works out. When you choose your way, your way, you see you got to make your own way. And God will let you make your own way. He will let you make it your way. He will let you do things your way. And sometimes we call things blessings that from God that are really everything that we work for. We work for. But there are some blessings that God says, I will just overtake you with. I'll tackle you in the street with some blessings. You wasn't even looking for it, but you was busy with kingdom business. Now I'm about to get busy with your business. You put me first. I'm about to make sure that you don't miss yours. It's going to be coming your way. Praise the Lord. I get excited about it because I've been overtaken with mega blessing many, many times, many, many times. And there's only one explanation. God had to do that. God had to do that. I know I didn't do it. I know it wasn't me. I know it was him. And I am just beyond, beyond capable of making certain things happen. And I know it. And a lot of time we want to take credit for everything that takes place in our life where I believe if you'll just brag on God, get busy uh, bragging and boasting on him, giving him all the glory. The Bible says Abraham was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Strong in faith, giving glory to God. I believe when you get to giving him glory, how'd that happen? Glory to God. Glory to God. Can't tell you. Not a 12-step program. I can't give you the one, two, threes, and ABCs of how it took place. But it did, and God is good, and God always takes care of his children in grand style. Grand style. God is amazing. God is good. And I'm just so thankful, so thankful to be able to advance the kingdom. Another day we get to advance his kingdom. Whether you make a million dollars, whether you, whether you uh, get promoted to running the whole company, if you're doing it for you and you're not doing it for him, you probably made all that happen. You can call it a blessing to God. You can say, well, Lord, just bless me. But you worked for it. You did it. You were doing it for you. You didn't advance his kingdom. But I thank God. Thank God that when he says, if you'll seek first the kingdom, the kingdom of God, prioritize kingdom business, prioritize living as a king with dominion, 
using your authority, using your power, using your dominion. You won't have to go after things. Things will come after you. You don't have to chase stuff. Stuff chases you. You don't have to open doors. God opens doors that no man could shut. God does things you could never do. God will make a way. He's a way maker. He's the way. He's the truth. He is the life. He is the way. He's the way that we now live. We got a new way, a new and living way, the Bible says. And now we are to walk out this life seeking first him, going after him. The Bible says, set your eyes on things above and not on things of this earth. Set your sights on the kingdom of heaven. Your will be done on earth as it is in what? Heaven. Set your sights on things above, not on things of this earth. Not on things of this earth. So if you look at the parable that Jesus talks about, and it's, a, it's, it's about the rich man and Lazarus, the rich man that died and went to hell, the rich man that died and he went to hell. This came out again last night, and we'll share it again right now. And the rich man died, went to hell, and he said, somebody please touch just the tip of my tongue with some water because in this flame, I am in torment. I'm in torment. And I need some relief. I need relief. And Jesus tells the story. It is a real story. This is a story Jesus told. I'm not telling it. There are people in torment in hell today. And their number one thing that they are talking about in hell, you wouldn't even believe it if I told you. And I'm going to tell you. The number one thing that they are discussing in hell right now is evangelism. Evangelism. Go study the story. The rich man in hell, in torment, lifted up his eyes. He said, please send somebody. Send somebody to my family. Send somebody to my family that they may not experience this torment and this flame. Isn't it amazing that once people get to hell, they get to hell and the, the message that they have and the things that they, he could have said anything, anything to Jesus that shows up to him. And he says, send somebody, send somebody to tell my brother, my mother, my sisters, tell them not to live in a such a way to come to this place. We would say these days, tell them to receive Jesus, tell them to get into the kingdom, tell them to be born again, tell them never, ever, ever, ever to come to this place. Go tell them. Their number one message is evangelism. It is sad, very sad, that other religions, false religions, like the Mormons or the uh, Jehovah Witness ride around on bicycles, got backpacks, got all this stuff they ride around on, and they go out and they're trying to lead people to something that doesn't even bring salvation. We have Jesus. We have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And just put your comments down low. My camera this time is turned around backwards. I can't follow along with the comments. So if you could, please drop them down low and we'll make sure that they all get up there as they come in. Praise the Lord. I want to just throw that out there. But we got all of these resources, all of these things, and we're good at church. We're good at singing songs. We're good at uh, worship team. We're good at all of the things except advancing, the, reaching others for the kingdom. You are never going to regret putting kingdom first, sowing into kingdom, serving in the kingdom, and bringing people into the kingdom. Sowing into the kingdom, serving into the kingdom, and bringing people into the kingdom. This is your purpose for being here. God did not leave us here so that we could do our thing. God did not leave us here so that we could make a million dollars, have a nice house, have a nice truck, have a nice car. He don't mind you having any of that, but he's not leaving you here for that. He's leaving you here to do what he told Adam to do. Go be fruitful and multiply. Multiply what? Multiply the kingdom. Multiply the blessing. All that Adam and Eve had ever received was the blessing. First thing they, we see, the Bible says God blessed them, and then he said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Did not mean just make a bunch of babies. It meant multiply what you got, what you have received. What did you receive? The blessing. The blessing was on Adam. The blessing was supposed to be multiplied all over the earth. And now we used to have a saying in high school, don't hide it, divide it. Don't hide it, divide it. I call Jesus one of the best kept secrets in the world. I say we got a lot of incognito believers running all over the place. They go to church. 
but they go to world and they go to the world and they go to work and they do all of these things, but nobody knows that they're really a believer. They got it at church, but away from the church is another story. I say, I say that we get busy with kingdom business, kingdom first, kingdom first. Praise the Lord. You're going to see on the bottom of the screen, and I'm going to have it up, and I'm going to put it up from here on. Recently, we had a lady uh, visit our church, and she was from Houston, Texas. She may be even be watching this, and we have multiple people in this same category. And it, I'm just thought of her right now, and showed up, heard the vision of the church, and asked if she could partner with and sow into and be a blessing to this ministry because she loves seeing the vision of going out and doing outreach and bringing people into the kingdom. I believe, I believe if you got a heart for Jesus, I believe if you have a heart for kingdom, then your whole heart, the Bible says that let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. What was on his mind when he came? What was on his mind? Was it just finances, increase? Stuff? No, it was bringing man back to his rightful place of a king with dominion so that he could then again go be fruitful and multiply. Multiply what? More kings with dominion. More kings with dominion. More the altar call last week in Winter Springs was not do you want to go to heaven, but do you want victory in your life? you tired of being defeated. You're tired of being busted. You're tired of being disgusted. You want victory in your life. Do you want that today? Do you want, because we are not just talking about heaven, waiting about 37 more years so that I can finally get somewhere and get out of here. It's time to dominate here. It's time to rule here. It's time to reign here. It's time for us to rise up and take our place and do what we have been called to do. Do what we were created to do. Do what we were left here to do. You were left here not to go to church, not just to praise God, not just to worship. A lot of people say that. We were created for worship. Well, the first instructions man got was be fruitful and multiply. Multiply. It wasn't just sing songs and worship me forever and ever and ever. I love worship and we ought to worship God and we ought to worship him with all our heart. But the first instruction he got was be fruitful and multiply. Multiply what you got. Multiply what you've been given. We in the kingdom of God need to get very serious in these days about evangelism. We got to get real serious. If their main topic of conversation in hell today is somebody, please go tell my friends, somebody, please go tell my family, somebody go do it. And then you got Jehovah's Witness and Mormons and all the false religions out there that are running around on bicycles spreading a message that don't even bring salvation. Don't even bring, don't even believe Jesus is Lord of all. And then we got him and we're doing church. What I was going to say on the bottom of the screen, you're going to be seeing from here on every time we do this, every time that we have class and we're going to be pushing, we're going to be doing more broadcasts. We're going to be doing more team class. You may just not know when they're going to be. We're about to hit our busy season. We're going to about nine or 10 states this, this year doing nine or 10 outreaches. And what I was going to say about the lady from Houston is she just, she, she blessed us that day. And then she looked up in the mailbox. Here's another blessing. Here's another check. Here's sowing into king. You're never going to regret sowing seed that increases and multiplies the kingdom. You're never going to regret it. Cash apps on the bottom of the screen. I believe that God has almost, my wife and I are just really talking big time about this, how it is time. It is time for giving people the opportunity to sow into what we do. You can sow into a lot of things. You can give to a lot of things. And our needs are met. I just want you, I want to share that with you. Our needs are met. We're not hurting. We're not hurting. We don't, uh, I did say the other night that, you know, a lot of people think we got a lot of things we don't really have, but we're not hurting. We're blessed. God meets all our needs in abundance and in grand style. We are not in any way coming on here begging we're not looking we're giving people opportunity opportunity to sow to give to put kingdom first if we're going to do 37 king classes and then not give you the and knowing what our church does knowing what we do all of these outreaches that that we I'll probably be dropping the uh the the places we've been and the think people 
over 10,000 salvations in the last few years, all over the place, counting them up, going back to the outreach. We went from Apopka to Kissimmee to Missouri to Houston to North Carolina to uh, Georgia, and then to Georgia again, and then down to South Florida, and then Louisiana, then to Houston, into Texas, into Missouri, into and now looking at going to Las Vegas, looking at going to different places. And Lord's really, I think, dealing with us about this king class. If we're going to be kings with dominion, kings with dominion, it's not so you can increase you. It's so you can increase him and his kingdom. His kingdom comes first. His kingdom comes priority. His kingdom is number one. And we are going to give the opportunity. We're going to get, we say kingdom first. Put kingdom first. Seek ye first the kingdom. Kingdom. What is the kingdom? It is man with dominion and authority to be multi- to multiply and be fruitful over all the earth again. We're now been put back in our rightful place to spread the kingdom of God, to advance the kingdom of God, and to multiply the kingdom of God. Don't lose focus. You're not just a king with dominion so that you can call in money. You're not just a king with dominion so you can just call in uh things that you desire, things that you have and lust after. No, no, no. People first. Kingdom first. So into people. So into the kingdom. So into the kingdom of God. You're never, ever, ever going to look up and say, man, I wish I'd have spent that on a, on a jet ski. I wish I'd have spent that on... No, you're going to be... This sliver of time is called a vapor. A vapor. And what is your life? It is a vapor that is here for a moment then passes away. In that space, sliver of time that you have you have a little bit of time that is going to affect billions and trillions and quadrillions of years and everything you did in that time will affect you forever you're never going to regret so into the kingdom serving the kingdom and multiplying the kingdom and if we're going to really take this message to heart if we're really going to do that bible says where your treasure is that's where your heart is also, I'm not ashamed. I have definite, I'm definitely, it's just after 37 classes, my wife and I talking, and, and we got people from all over asking, can they, can we get involved with what you're doing? Can we get involved with what you're doing? Can we get involved? Can we get involved? Can we sow into that? Can we sow into that? And we're like, yeah, you know, you can, but we don't do it for that. We're not doing it to get an offering. And we got totally rebuked by Jesus. We got totally rebuked. Because not everybody does what we do. Not, I mean, I look, everybody might, everybody's not called to do what we do. But we're going out into the lost and we're advancing the kingdom and taking territory and kicking the devil in the mouth. Kicking him in the teeth and telling him, you can go to hell. You thought you had them, but you don't have them. You thought you, they were going to be slaves forever, but now they're sons. And now they're kings with dominion and authority to rule and reign in this life. So, not at all. Not at all do I say any of what I say right there to put down another church, put down other people when I say not a lot of people do what we do. We know it because we're out there and we don't never see people out there on the street doing what we do. God's called us. He's That's been my calling since 1995 when I got saved was to go out and evangelize, evangelize. Even coming here to pastor this church, the Lord dealt with me and he told me specifically because I told him I didn't want to pastor. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do it. I want to go out and I want to keep preaching to the lost and go winning people. And the Lord said, I'm sending you there to develop a church that is an outreach center. I'm going to send people to you to help reach a mighty harvest. Well, I could get excited about that. I could get excited about that. I said, well, praise God. I'll do that. I'll do that. Hard, rough, 12, 13, 14. Got came here in 2010. So we're pushing on. Uh, 14 years. Was it easy? Man, no, it wasn't easy. Wasn't easy. Was was uh, a battle. Was a faith fight. Had a faith fight for 14 years. We coming out on top. Hey, Amen. We winning. Praise the Lord. We are winning. And the word works. It always works. And you stand on the word and you use your authority, use your dominion, and you press on to do what? Advance his kingdom. Advance his kingdom. Please don't lose sight when we do these classes that we're saying it's so you can make you son is so you can make jesus famous we're not trying to get famous we're not trying to get likes we're not trying to get 
shares. We're not trying to get re, uh, see who all can, you know, like our uh, ministry, like our, I don't care who likes it, who don't like it. Amen. We're doing what God called us to do, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to continue to do. And it's just something that the Lord dealt with Danielle and I about. And that's kind of what I wanted this King class to be about. Might be a little bit shorter class, too. I'm, I got to be somewhere here in just a little while. And I just wanted to share that because is kingdom first? Well, if where your treasure is, your heart is also. The only way to tell that is to look at your treasure. Where does your treasure go? Does your treasure, is there more treasure in your checking account bank records toward kingdom than it is other things? Is there more toward kingdom? Now, watch this. When you get busy with his business, he gets busy with your business. When you get busy serving and sowing into him, he gets busy sowing back into you. You'll never outgive him. You'll never outgive him. So we got 10 states coming up. I wanted to start this off because it just really stirred on me again, driving back. We drove this time to uh, Winter Springs down to Orlando, Danielle and I did. And we're just talking about it on the way home and saying, you know, we got, uh, we got nine more of these to do this year. How many salvations is that going to be? It's going to be like, who knows? I mean, we're believing for multiplication on even what the harvest is coming in. And I guarantee you we're going to see it. We got radical healing mess, healings taking place left and right last Saturday. Left and right. People saying instantly, heal, heal, heal. Had one guy with his wife in the hospital and his mom uh, fighting for their life. And he said during our prayer time of praying for the sick and praying and preaching the word and him out there, he was just believing, kind of standing in the gap for healing for his wife. And then all of a sudden, a few minutes later, he gets the call. His wife says, out of nowhere, they're discharging me. They're discharging me. Some crazy, I mean, stuff, you, just crazy, wild stuff takes place when you go out. The Bible says, signs and wonders shall follow the word. Follow the word. So if, if it's going to follow, signs and wonders follow, then it means you got to be moving. You must get moving, praise the Lord. So we are going to be moving. We're going to be moving a lot. We're going to be advancing the kingdom. We're going to be raising up kings with dominion. And it should not be people in hell that put evangelism at the top of their list. It should not be rich people in hell. And not only rich people go to hell, everybody that don't receive Jesus will end up there. How are they going to hear lest somebody preach? And how are they going to preach lest somebody send them? And I have no you know, apologies. I, I'm not one that takes up an offering and asks for uh, people to sow into the kingdom and then feel like, oh my gosh, I, I hope that didn't offend anybody. If, if it offends you to sow into the kingdom, to see kingdom multiplied, that's not none of my, I mean, you're going to have to deal, you, you would be the one that has to deal with that. Amen. We know what we're doing. We're called to go. Kingdom first. Kingdom first is what the Lord told me to title this tonight. And is kingdom first. In your life. Now, you may not be called to evangelize. You may not be called to teach or preach or stand in a pulpit or do anything like that. But we are all called to advance and multiply the kingdom in our own way. Whether it is serving, whether it is sowing, whether it is giving, whatever it is. We've had people ask if they can drive from other states and meet us in an outreach. We've had people show up from other states and come and be at our outreach and said, I just want, I wanted to serve, wanted to be there to serve. It's time for evangelism. It's time for kingdom first. It's time to put our dominion to work in doing what? Taking down the gates of hell. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Gates of hell shall not prevail. Gates are designed to keep us out. Keep us out. And they don't work. We're coming in. We're coming into the enemy's camp. Taking back everything that he thought he had. He thought he was winning. He thought he was on top. He thought he had them. He thought they were going to go to hell, but we're going to show up, roll in with 18 wheelers, roll in with the gospel message. We're containers and carriers of the gospel, and we got to go. We got to go. We got to go, or we got to, if you can't go, you can, we go going. You can help send us, and we're going. Cash apps on the bottom of the screen. You can go to champion, a champ, a championlife.com, and there's a way to, that you can sow with a credit card, give. Again, no apology necessary. I think you should. I think you should be giving toward advancing of the kingdom. I think you should sow into the kingdom. I think you should know every 
week, month, day. I'm, I'm going, I'm sowing in the king, kingdom of God is my priority. And it is to take dominion and territory away from darkness and to spread his light. Take from death and give the life of God. Take from the enemy and bring them into the kingdom of God. Thank God somebody did it for us. But it's a shame to me how we got born again and somebody was going around and got you saved. And then sometimes we get born again and we forget about the others that need us to come tell them. Again, this is Kingdom First message, Kingdom First, 37 King classes, and we've never done one like this, but it is vital, vital, vital. And I believe it with all my heart that if you will put Kingdom First, and if, here's the deal, let me say this, you don't want to sow into what we do, which is going out into the highways and the byways and reaching the lost and the drunks and the, you know, the people that stink with sin. Find somebody that is going to the harvest. Find somebody that is going to the lost. Find somebody. Don't just pour your money into a church that really is not reaching people, that is just doing a concert and a little tip and having a little motivational speech and everybody leaves and don't nobody go out and then do anything. Praise the Lord. Again, there are teaching churches. There's people called to teach so that the people can go out. But still in that teaching, it better be a thrust of going. If there's not a thrust of going, if you, don't, if you know all about who you are in Christ and your authority as a believer and uh, how the faith works and how faith is released and how faith operates and, that, and you're not doing it to put a dent in the kingdom of darkness, then you must be just using your faith to get stuff for you. And I, don't, I found that if I'll just get busy with doing what his business, kingdom of God, multiplying the seed sown, multiplying what God has given to me because he's been really good. And I refuse to keep it to myself. I refuse to be an undercover Christian. I refuse to be a person. I refuse to be an undercover Christian. I refuse to be a person who knows the answer to everybody's problem and me never go share it. We're going to go. You're welcome to come with us. You can uh, comment below, talk, tag, share. Really do share. This would be uh, an awesome, awesome opportunity for you to advance the kingdom, uh, if you share this message. Uh, we've had so many testimonies lately of people that are catching the message, the program that we're doing on King Class and on our prayer services, and people are watching that we got no ideas watching. we got people that are tuning in. We have no idea. You don't even understand what happens when you go to sharing this message. And then I've had, had a guy tell me, oh, man, been about two, three months ago now, what, doing a King Class or doing, I think it was a King Class, and he was uh, in a hotel room. I think he was a truck driver. And he said, you have no idea what you just did. Got a long text me messenger message from him. He said, you have no idea what you just. Might have been even a church service. Sunday morning, somebody shared, just a share. And he ends up uh, catching, the, catching the message. They're all the same to me. They run together. We do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Wednesday night. Sunday morning, uh, Sunday morning twice. You got all kind of different things going every day. I, I believe we ought to be sowing the word every day. So this guy says, you know, I was just could not have heard this at a better time. There's no better time for me to have heard what I just heard. Praise God. Praise God. Share. Share. That's about the least you could do is share. Praise God. Got cash out. Drop it in there. Got. Uh, credit card, put it on. Church uh, address, I believe, is on the website. We're going, and we're giving you the opportunity to be sowing. You don't have to. You can put your money in all kind of other things. You can sow toward other things. You can do a lot of other things with your finances. I really don't believe there's anything any more important right now, right now in this time that we live in. What if you, I had a lady one time, and I'll share this, and then I'll probably go ahead and stop for tonight. Just kind of wanted to come out there and let you know, guys. King Class 37, and we want to make sure your priorities are correct. This King's Dominion stuff is not so you can uh, accumulate stuff. It's so that you can multiply people. Lord told me when we got blessed, when we sold our last building, he said, put the money in people. Don't put it in the bank. First thing we bought was outreach equipment. First thing we bought was 18-wheeler. First thing we went and bought 
was equipment to get us into other places to go preach the gospel because I knew the vision when I moved here. And God is good, is all I say. God is good. I had a lady, though, in our, when we were still living faith over in Niceville, and we were doing an outreach. I, we, we, did an out, we, we hadn't always just done outreaches when we got 18 wheelers. We was going around with utility trailers, 12-foot utility trailers, standing in the back of it and going to parking lots and seeing the lost saved then. This isn't something new that we just started doing. I've been doing this for about 25, 26, 20-something years. Been saved 28 years and been doing this for a long time. It's gotten better and better and better. We've learned every, every one we learned. But we were going about four or five years ago, six years ago now, probably over in the other building, and uh, had a lady come up to me. We were taking up an offering or an outreach, sharing, giving people the opportunity to sow into outreach. And the Lord moved on this lady's heart, and she came up to me after service, and she said, Pastor Roddy, how much does one of them outreaches cost total? And at the time, glory to God, it's not like that anymore. We were trying to keep everything below about $3,000, and we don't do it as big as we do now and do all the things we do. But I said, oh, about, about $3,000, $2,500, dollars $3, we can make one happen. She goes, well, I'm paying for this one. And I said, you don't have to do that. She goes, I know I don't have to do it, but I want to do it. I said, all right, get, get after it. She said, I got the check right here, and I'll write it right now. Wrote it. Two months later, a month later, she went in the hospital. Two months later, she was in heaven. She didn't even get to go to the outreach. And the last thing she did, because she got sick shortly after that, and then was in the hospital for about a month and then had some complications, died, went to heaven, had her funeral at our church, hung up her Dream Team jersey on a chair in our church, and I tell everybody now, that day we had one of the, Biggest crowds in the Funiac Springs we ever had. She sewed and paid for the whole outreach. 500 salvation in that outreach. And she didn't even know it at the time. But we went out and saw, because we was taking up the offering for it, and it was about a month away. It wasn't the next weekend. And then she got in the hospital and she died. She paid for the outreach. Guarantee you when she got to heaven, she found out, oh, my, thanks. Maybe she could have just gave that to her son or daughter or gave it to put it in her will, whatever. She put it into the kingdom. And king, I guarantee you, forever, forever and ever and ever, that last seed that she sowed, true story too, the last seed she sowed, she's going to get there and see a harvest of innumerable measures on uh, multiple neighborhoods built in heaven of people that came into the kingdom because she just put kingdom first and said, I could do a lot of things with this, but I'm going to sow it into the kingdom. Again, not at all any apologetic. I don't take up apologetic offerings. I don't give people apolo apologies on they can sow into the kingdom. You can do whatever you, you plan to do with your money. Most people will anyway. But there's some people out there got a heart for kingdom. Your heart is kingdom and see it increase. We want to start going every other week. Right now we go about eight to ten times a year out to other places and reach people. We want to start going every other week. We're not there yet. We need more help. We need more people. And we will need more finance. We can't just uh, go and blow like we do a lot of times. But I promise you this, you'll never regret sowing into the kingdom. You'll never regret putting him first place, his kingdom first place. How do you know if you do that? Is your focus on advancing his kingdom? It will help, and I promise you this, when you sow into the kingdom, when you give to the kingdom, when you serve the kingdom, you will have real peace, real joy, real fulfillment in your life like you've never had before. My wife and I, again, driving home the other day, we said we have to give people the opportunity to sow into what we're doing. What we're doing is amazing, and I'm not saying it because of us. Thank God for the opportunity. Thank, oh, I'm so, we are so extremely blessed and thankful for the opportunity to be able to do what God has called us to do. It is amazing. It is over the top radical. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad 
that God allows us to do what we do. We just want to give you the opportunity, and uh, we're in agreement on it now. I've, I've been for for a couple of years. I'm like, ah, yeah, well, man, we, we got it. We can go do it. We can go do it. We can go do it. Use faith. Use faith. But then the Lord dealt with me and rebuked me and said, "Give people the opportunity to sow into advancing the kingdom and bringing people out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light." Lord moves on your heart. Jump on it. Give, we'd love to have it. We'd love to take it to the lost, and we'd love to see it multiplied. I'll say this one more last time. You're never going to regret it. And the people in hell should not be the number one proponent of evangelism. It ought to be the kingdom of God, the church world, the body of Christ that is sold out about reaching people for King Jesus. I say, I say, we going? We'd love, come with us. Come, if you don't want to, so into it. Come and see what's going on. Come and see what takes place. Kingdom of God goes. Joy hits the city. Peace hits the city. People dancing all that. We go and kingdom is manifested. First place. Put him first. Put him first. See if he don't put you first. Put him first and see if he don't make all your dreams come true. Not to make a ministry. Not to have a radio show. Not to have a TV program. But because you love him. Just because you love him and he's been good to you, he will radically, radically, super abundantly, far above, exceed your wildest expectations. Again, I'll be putting the comments up tonight and uh, make sure that you uh, like, share, get this out there. Uh, kingdom first. This is to individuals right now. Kingdom is at first. Is it number one for you? Or do we get bogged down with life and doing our thing? Put him first and all these things shall be added unto you. Put his kingdom first and all these things shall be added unto you. We over and over at King Class reiterate to you that man's purpose and his calling and his purpose for being created was to be fruitful, multiply, and take dominion. He lost his authority. He lost his royalty. We got it back. What now do we have back? Royalty and authority to do what? What we were created to do. Rule, reign multiply be fruitful multiply and take dominion that was man's purpose that was man's purpose drop my glass that was man's purpose not advance his kingdom but to advance his pray about it see what your lord leads you to do thank you for watching share like uh comment like i said i got my, my cameras turned around backwards and i don't have my little device with me so i can't put up all the com but i'll put the comments up but i just can't acknowledge them at the same time that you're putting them in. So thank all of you. God is good. God is good. Be praying for us. This next month we have a conference, so we're not going out this next month. It'll be the next after that, and then it's nonstop. Nonstop. Want to come get involved? Move here. Move. Some of you might get it on your heart to come help. We need about 100 more helpers. We got a lot of great help right now, but we'll take more helpers. I believe the Lord's going to start dealing with people's heart to come here to help bring in the harvest. I believe it. Never going to ask anybody, because if God don't tell you, we sure don't want you. But if the Lord deals with you to move your, uh, your stuff down to the Destin beaches, <laughs> Fort Walton Beach, Destin, uh, uh, the, the beach area, everybody said, oh, Lord called you to Destin. That's nice. You go into the beach. I go to the beach about once a year. Probably more vacationers go to the beach more than I do. We busy with kingdoms. We busy with. We didn't move here to go to the beach. We didn't move here to play golf. We came here to advance the kingdom. It's great that it's there. I love to eat beside it and look out there at it and see my big God. And just he reminds me that I'll never lack for anything because he has a ra an abundant supply that'll never run out. So be blessed. Put kingdom first. Make sure that you are all about advancing his kingdom. That's your primary focus. King's dominion is not designed for you to increase. You will. It's designed for his kingdom to increase. When his kingdom begins to be, uh, you're not making you famous or you popular. You're making him popular and advancing his purpose. He has no problem with you being blessed. None. But keep him first and put him number one. And you will never lack a day in your life. Be blessed. See you guys next week. Hopefully.
Might even throw in some in between. Might even get some messages coming out in between. I'm, I'm really thinking about this. Thinking about putting uh, more out there. More, more. I know we do every day right now, but what about every night? What about every other? We, we got to get more word preached. Amen. Be blessed. See you guys next week. Like, share, comment. Tell us where you're watching from. Be blessed. Bye-bye.